episode of Book Reviews and Rants is brought to you by Unexplained. Looking through a window can be like looking into the past. The images can't always be explained. In this collection of short stories, the reader will have an opportunity to discover mystery, magic, romance, and even terror in everyday things. This collection includes the award-winning paranormal title In the Window, as well as the romance title Encounter, the general fiction title Our Place, and the psychological thriller What She Lost. Unexplained, an ebook available exclusively at Amazon.com. Hello and welcome to Book Reviews and Rants. Today I will be reviewing two books that have absolutely nothing to do with one another. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell and Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I will basically be reading from reviews I've already posted elsewhere, but then I will give myself two minutes to rant about my reviews or the books in question. This should be fairly interesting. Um, as this is episode one, I do not have a guest, but always have something to look for in the future. So let's get started. First up is Cloud Atlas. And I gave this book five blue books. This is a really good book that still has me a little confused a month after reading, um, a month after listening to the audio presentation of it. So when I first um, got this book, um, I listened to it. Um, I can't imagine how Hollywood will be able to pull this story off, but maybe one day I'll bring myself to the point of watching the movie, which I did, and I'll try not to rant too much about that. I'm not going to make any attempts to sound super profound here. I like this book because it was magical in a completely magic-free way. Themes that come to mind in this story of stories is reincarnation, propaganda, racism, the power of knowledge and or education, and so much more. And of, co and of course, there is love, but not really romance. Um, there is sex, violence, music, art, philosophy, and more, all cosmically mingling together from one story to another in this odd anthology. I've probably already confused a few people, but that's okay because I'm still a little confused myself. I mean, I get it. I understand what I heard and how it all works together, but, just, but I just don't know if I get the meaning of it all. What I do get is a warning about the human condition and the many great and scary things we are capable of. When advancements in technology, communication, and politics come together, it's powerful, but that's only one part of it. Time and change is a variable, is a variable humanity has no control over, and it seems to be the ultimate mastermind of fate. I seriously do I seriously do not have words to describe exactly what it is about the story I loved. I just know I was intrigued and compelled to complete it from the very start. I am a lover of well-told story and this book tells amazing stories in a very creative way. This book makes you think about things you never knew you neglected, at least I did. I can clearly see that this book would be too intense for a great majority of my friends, which is why most of them have seen the movie and based on their responses to that it's a good thing they stayed away from the book. In any case I think this is a great adult read. <clears throat> Something to get your mind going to places you never thought to go. The pace fluctuate and the themes and stories can be confusing but reaching the end is totally worth it. So that is the original um, review that I wrote and of course I sprinkled in some comments. So now it's time for me to set my timer and rant a bit. I am going to, and I used my phone for that, <laughs> I'm going to give myself two minutes starting now. So like I said, I loved the book. The stories were confusing but in a good way. Um, one story kind of led into another but then it all came back around. Um, the movie was I have a love-hate relationship with the movie there were certain aspects of the movie that I loved I honestly had no idea how they were going to pull off you know what I heard when I listened to the audio but how they were gonna put that into you know a visual format and I think they did a wonderful job with that aspect of it the special effects even some of the underlying tones and themes in the story because 
not everything is clear cut. So I think they made a very, you know, good attempt to present the book as accurately as possible. Of course, they made some changes because that's what Hollywood is. You have to kind of make some changes and sacrifices to be able to put the content of a book into the time frame of a movie. So I'm okay with that. There were some other things about the movie that just kind of were disappointing, things that were left out or changed. And, you know, everybody has their preferences, so I'm not going to get into a lot of that. But there was one particular issue involving race in the book that I thought when when I saw the movie, I wanted to see that. Um, when I read, when I listened to the book, I wanted to see that in the movie and it wasn't there. And that was very disappointing to me. Um, you know, Hollywood took the liberty to add in a homosexual character um, that wasn't homosexual in the book. And that was fine. I understand, you know, diversity and all things like that. You know, whether you agree or not, sometimes um, you have to put in certain, you know, diversity to expose people to them. I get that. But why would they add that but then give out this very incredible message um, about race that was in the book? And I don't know how much, let's see, I only have 10 seconds left, so I can't go into detail about it, but that was disappointing. But other than that, the book and the movie were both um, worth experiencing. So, up oh, and there's my time. Okay, so next up, I will be talking about the book Cinder. And this one I gave four books. So here I go. Cinder is just as the book cover suggests, a futuristic retelling of the classic Cinderella story, but there, um, but there is the brink of a great space war looming in the background. It tells the story of a cyborg teen, uh, a mechanic commonly referred to as Cinder. There is a mean stepmother and stepsister, but there's also a nice stepsister. There's also a scary plague and some crazy curfews and rules about life as a cyborg. So when Cinder has a chance encounter with the charming Prince Kai, the last thing she wants is for anyone to know about it, especially not him. No one can know that the prince has associated with the cyborg peasant, but before long, that's the least of Cinder's worries. Um, I'm a fan of fairy tales and all their retelling, so it would have to take quite a bit for me not to like this story. But even with my own personal bias, I think this is a really good story. It is very creative and imaginative. I think what I like most about the story is that Cinder isn't presented as just another girl. I know she's a cyborg, but she's still a person. Um, I mean, what I mean is that deep down in most Cinderella stories, the girl really does want to go to the ball and dance with the prince and have butterflies flutter across the sky, but that's not Cinder. Her youth is gone, and she has too much else on her mind to even think about the ball. But that doesn't mean she hasn't wasted a few moments thinking about how cute the prince is. Then there's the matter of the plague, the threat of war, and the moon people. I was really impressed with the way the multiple conflicts mingled in this story. The whole idea of the traditional love story is almost put on the back burner as the rest of the story takes over. I unfortunately have read too many books and seen too many movies to be kept in the dark about Cinder's greatest secret. I figured it out pretty quickly, but I was still impressed with how it all came together. I have a feeling there will be more action in the follow-up story simply based on the amount of intrigue and conflict in this one. Needless to say, I am looking forward to continuing the story. So that was my original review that I wrote. and. Let's see, two minutes. I don't know what I was thinking confining myself to only two minutes, but here I go. I am ready to rant. So I loved this story, um, which is pretty evident from my review. And I think the way I read it might have been a little bit confusing. What I wanted to say was that Cinder was too busy to be worried about the prince. You know, she... She never asked to be a cyborg, but she was, and she knew her place in society. This story um, gives a wonderful depiction of classism. Um, you know, people are, who are into the whole show, um, Downton Abbey, you know, the rich versus the poor and all that kind of stuff, good for them. But in this particular story, it goes beyond that. I like it when uh, writers find a way to address these social issues that a lot of people don't really think of in new and creative ways. I think um, 
the story Planet of Apes kind of does that too. You know, when we get to the point where we stop worrying so much about our race issues and it becomes like a species issue. And that's kind of what we have in Cinder. You have people versus cyborgs, but the cyborgs are people. Most of them didn't ask to become that way. Something happened, their life was in danger, and they had to have part of them replaced with this mechanism, which somehow makes them um, a lesser citizen. And I thought, I loved the fact that that was a major part of the story. I mean, sure, there was hints of romance. How could there not be, you know, teenagers in love? But that was not the driving force of this book. And I think that's the main reason why I liked it so much. I mean, the girl in me, of course, you know, loves the fairy tales, but I'm kind of a tomboy. So I'm glad there wasn't a lot of mushy stuff. And um, I'm looking forward to reading the next one. My, I am such a slow reader. Not, not physically like slow reader, but I just, I'll get to it. And when I do, I'll review it. And so I'm excited. I can't believe I finished that rant before my time. Obviously, I really liked it because I didn't have a lot to rant about. So, and there's my time. So I guess I'll be ranting more when I have conflict. If I like something, I won't be ranting so much. That might be good. Maybe I'll I'll cut it short and save you guys some hassle. <laughs> so let's see. Um, that's all I have for today. Um, I'd love to know what you think of these reviews um if you have rated either of these books cloud outlets or um cinder uh leave your two cents in the comments and let me know what to think let me know what you think of this show do you like the format um hopefully i'll have some guests and that'll kind of break up just you having to listen to me the whole time but I, seriously i'd love to hear your two cents on the whole matter so please leave me comments i love them Next month, um, the titles I'll be reviewing are The Conduit by Stacey Rourke and Divergent by Veronica Roth. You can follow me on Twitter using the hashtag ReviewRants and tell me what you think of the next month's title for a chance to be featured in this video. So you can tweet that um, and use the hashtag ReviewRants and um, I'll share it. Uh, so let's see, next Monday I'll actually be posting an episode of toy box movie reviews so please come back for that and remember if you're interested in guest hosting or sponsoring a toy box episode just visit etoythomas.com to learn more so until next time this is toy thomas saying that i believe authors are just as important to the world of entertainment as music groups and movie stars see ya